This is my husband Rob, who loves the Royals, hanging loose at sea, and grappling with velociraptors. And this is my wife Marcy, she loves looking glamorous. Yes, she loves all kinds of dogs as you can see, and she loves Disney World's Dole Whip, can't get enough. And we're going to be traveling to destinations and all sorts of attractions to tell you all about it. So welcome to Travels with the Baldy Locks. So before I show you our tour and kind of go through the process of touring the White House, I wanted to give you a couple tips in case you decide that you want to tour the White House. So public tour requests must be submitted through your member of Congress. Um, if you live in the United States, you need to plan ahead because requests, um, they can be made up to three months in advance and you should submit your request as early as possible because there's only a limited number of spaces available. Uh, the tour is free. Um, everyone 18 and older must have a government issued photo ID, which you'll have to show multiple times throughout the line when you're actually waiting to get into the White House. It is a self-guided tour. Uh, the Secret Service is available um, throughout the tour to help answer questions. And there are no public restrooms available during the White House tour. So you might want to go to the bathroom in the White House Visitor Center, which is nearby, before your tour. We were actually staying in Pennsylvania, but I really wanted to visit the White House on my birthday. And so we actually drove in to Maryland to the Green Belt Metro line. Um, I read that it was best not to drive into Washington DC uh, to avoid all the traffic and congestion and trying to find a place to park. Um, so we actually went to the Green Belt Metro station and purchased a day pass. Uh, for two day passes, um, for the Metro line, um, it was around 33 to $35, somewhere in that range. And I would say it took probably about 35 minutes or so um, to get to the stop at Gallery Place Chinatown where we got off and actually finished walking uh, to the White House. And we actually, on the Metro, um, sat across from a screen that showed us the different stops so that we knew how close we were uh, to our stop. And here you can see a few pictures of the train and of the area of the station in Gallery Place Chinatown where we got off of the Metro. So before we toured the White House, we walked around and looked at the White House neighborhood and we saw the North Lawn and then also visited the Lafayette um, Square. So the North view of the White House uh, features the iconic portico um, and also what is now known as Lafayette Square. Um, it was a Lafayette Square was originally included as part of the plans uh, for the presidential estate, but Thomas Jefferson disagreed and ordered Pennsylvania Avenue be cut in front of the White House in 1804. Uh, so this change separated the private executive mansion from the public park, leaving the North Lawn as the president's front yard. Um, and then the Lafayette Square is a seven acre public park that sits directly north of the White House and it's named in honor of General Lafayette of France. So we visited Lafayette Square and saw all of the statues. Um, I took pictures of several of them. Um, you see here a statue of Andrew Jackson at the Battle of New Orleans, um, which is at the center of the square. It was erected in 1853. It's the first bronze statue cast in the country and the first equestrian statue in the world to be balanced solely on horses' hind legs. So here you also see a photo of the Rochambeau statue erected in 1902. Um, it's a statue of American Revolutionary War hero, General Comte Rochambeau. Hopefully I pronounced that okay. 
And then I also took a photo of the von Steuben statue in honor of Major General Wilhelm von Steuben, which was installed in 19. 10 in honors of this Revolutionary War hero. So then we went to get in line for our tour of the White House. It's set to arrive about 15 minutes ahead of time, but oh my goodness, we certainly could have arrived before then. As you can see, the line is pretty long and I believe it took us about 45 minutes or so to get through this long line um, and go through all of these uh, checks to even get into uh, the White House. So you're seeing pictures here of this beginning of the line. Um, and there's the seal there on the railing. Here me and Robert are as we're waiting in this long line. Um, but I mean, there's a lot to look at. You see the Secret Service with their guns and some of them um, are being comical. So <laughs> they uh, keep it entertaining for everybody as we're waiting in line and keep moving from one line to the next line. Um, so here is the entry sign. Keep that government issued ID out. And here's a list of those prohibited items. So you can't bring in video cameras or cameras with detachable lenses or tablets or iPads or tripods or monopods or camera sticks or bags of any kind, um, any pointed objects, strollers, food, liquids, aerosols, tobacco products, personal grooming items like makeup and lotion. I couldn't even have my like lip gloss. Um, and of course, the normal guns and ammunition, fireworks, maze, martial arts, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, now, you can bring compact cameras in. There's only still photography allowed, no video recording or streaming. Um, lenses must be less than three inches long. Um, umbrellas without metal tips, wallets, cell phones. And now talking or texting is not permitted. Only still photography is allowed. Um, and you have to silence your phone. Um, and then all items needed for medical purposes will be permitted, like wheelchairs, electronic scooters, things like that. So definitely check ahead of time. But we pretty much uh, did not bring anything with us besides uh, the wallet, our ID, um, and then the ticket that you need to get into uh, the White House that you'll print off ahead of time. So the tour here is of the East Wing. Uh, the current East Wing lobby was constructed in 1942. The colonnade that connects the East Wing to the ground floor of the White House was actually an addition built by Theodore Roosevelt in 1902. Um, here you can see a painting of Andrew Johnson, who was the president after Abraham Lincoln's assassination in 1865 and served until 1869. Uh, Johnson is one of only two presidents to serve in Congress after leaving the White House. Um, here, you're going to see the pergola, which was designed uh, for the East Garden uh, by a Chinese-American architect. And in 1965, the garden where the pergola sits was dedicated to First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy to honor her work in restoring the White House and preserving its history. Um, so here you're going to see a bronze bust of Abraham Lincoln, which was produced in 1908 and donated to the White House collection in 1954. It's here in the East Garden Room, which is also the site of the White House Historical Association gift shop. Now we're entering the ground floor of the White House from the East Wing. Here's the ground floor corridor. Uh, this space serves as a passage for the first family and visitors um, of the White House tours. Um, so there's only a few pieces of furniture that are kept in the uh, this area. Here's an official portrait of First Lady Laura Bush donated by the White House Historical Association in 2012. Here's a photo of the library. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt designated this room the library in 1935. So before that, 
it was mostly used for storage or as a laundry room. Um, there are more than 2,800 books in this room um, that represent like the best of American history and literature. The library is used by the first family and the White House staff and sometimes serves as a setting for like interviews or televised addresses um, from the president. And then here is the Vermal Room. In 1957, the White House received a gift of over 1,500 objects, uh, gold-plated silver um, or Vermal. President and First Lady Eisenhower accepted the collection and used the pieces to decorate the space on the ground floor, um, naming it the Vermal Room. Here is the China Room. So First Lady Edith Wilson named this room the China Room in 1917 and established it as a space to display the growing collection of historical White House tableware. Here you'll see a painting of First Lady Grace Coolidge, which was completed in 1924, and it depicts the First Lady with her white collie, Rob Roy, one of many pets that the Coolidges kept in the White House. Um, so now the tour is gonna move upstairs to the state floor. In the first room that we see is the East Room, which is the largest room in the White House, and it was always intended as a ceremonial space, but it's not always been used that way. In fact, when the room was, it wasn't even finished when the first White House residents, John and Abigail Adams, arrived in 1800. Uh, so the, eight, the East Room um, wasn't even finished for another 29 years. Since its completion, the grand space has been used to celebrate like holidays and weddings and festive events such as that. In this room, you'll see George Washington's portrait. Um, it was painted by renowned artist Gilbert Stewart in 1797 and purchased by the government for the White House in 1800. Now what's interesting is the portrait was almost destroyed in 1814 when the British troops burned the capital city, but First Lady Dolly Madison ordered her servants to save it as they fled the White House. So this presidential portrait has been a constant presence inside the executive mansion since 1817. You also see a full-length portrait in this room of Martha Washington. In addition, in the room you'll see three glass uh, brass chandeliers which were purchased for the East Room in 1902. Um, they have been shortened twice, I believe. Um, each chandelier um, has 6,000 pieces of glass and weighs about 1,200 pounds. So next, you're going to see the green room. And this parlor has been known as the green room since 1818 when James Monroe chose the color for his decorations. Although Thomas Jefferson used the room for dining, um, it's basically been used as a sitting room for teas and interviews and small parties. There's a portrait here um, of this 1767 portrait of Benjamin Franklin painted by David Martin. And as you know, Franklin was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence and the, Const the U.S. Constitution. Here is the Blue Room, and it is located directly across from the north door of the White House and looks out on the South Lawn and the National Mall. Got some cool pictures of that here from outside the window. Uh, this room has been used for formal receptions um, by, you know, almost all of the presidents who lived here and also features the official White House Christmas tree each December. 
So the first vice president to become president without being elected to the office, John Tyler, which was president in 1841, after President William Henry Harrison died only a month into his term. So this portrait of Tyler was commissioned by the U.S. government in 1857 and completed by George P.A. Healy in 1859. And so the last of the state floor parlors to be named after a color here is the Red Room. And President James Polk and First Lady Sarah Polk decorated the room with bright red fabrics in 1845. So probably one of my favorite rooms that we seen was the state dining room, which you're seeing now. Uh, Thomas Jefferson used the space as his office, I think, but for the most part um, throughout history, it's been used for meetings and receptions and, and things like that. Today, the room can seat up to 140 people, um, but it was not always um, so spacious. It was actually enlarged um, in 1902 as part of Theodore Roosevelt's renovations. And it's the second largest area in the White House um, and provides, you know, a lot of space for formal dinners and to honor heads of state and other uh, dignitaries. Um, you can see a painting of Abraham Lincoln, who served as president from 1861 to 1865. So the artist was George P.A. Healy, um, who painted this likeness of Lincoln in 1869, um, based on a pose from an earlier sitting. But after completion, uh, President Ulysses S. Grant and chose not to acquire uh, this painting for the White House in favor of another Lincoln portrait, but then Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert, decided to purchase it for himself. Uh, the painting was actually bequeathed to the White House by Robert's wife in 1939. So here you'll see an oil on canvas portrait of John F. Kennedy, who served as president from 1961 until his assassination in 1963. Here's a portrait of Ronald Reagan. He was president from 1981 to 1989. And then here's the seal of the president of the United States, which is located above the doorway leading into the blue room. On October 25th, 1945, President Harry S. Truman issued Executive Order 9646, which officially defined the presidential coat of arms and seal. So since 1945, the only changes made to the seal were the additions of the 49th and 50th stars for the states of Alaska and Hawaii. So the entrance hall has always been used to receive guests and to hold large gatherings and to present the president and the first lady. And then inside that area, there is a piano. So it's a 1938 piano and bench, which were gifted to the White House by Steinway and Sons. The mahogany case of the piano features scenes of American dance forms and is supported by three eagle-shaped legs. So upon walking out of the White House, um, you see here the north portico, and of course you have to turn as you exit the building and look back and take lots of pictures. What a wonderful and memorable experience. Um, if you want to take a virtual tour of the White House and the surrounding area, the White House Historical Association has an awesome mobile app called the White House Experience. Um, I used it to get some information uh, for this uh, video. So definitely, I highly recommend that. Check it out. Um, the tour of the White House was just an amazing experience, um, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants to learn more about our history. I also want to mention that 
the um, people that we encountered in Washington, D.C. were some of the friendliest people um, that we've ever met. Um, several times um, when we needed to ask for directions, um, looking for the White House, um, people went out of their way to help us. I just wanted to note that. It was really awesome. Travels, Travels with, with the Baldy Locks. Like us on Facebook. And subscribe to us on YouTube.